Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to review the pens that I used during the month of January of 2022. Five of these pens, they were price range winners from last year. And then the sixth pen, well, that was a wild card entry. So join me now down on the mat and let's take a look and rank these six pens. So here we are down on the mat. Well, this month, I've got to be honest, it's been so hard to do my ranking this month. Every single one of the pens could very easily have come out in position number one. So I've had to have a real good think about this one. It's been one of the hardest months I've had for coming up with these rankings. The first pen, and this is position number six. Well, what I decided, that's going to go to the D-like New Moon 2. I love the looks of this pen. Here we go. Just let me spin that around for you. Just look at the colouring on that pen. It's absolutely gorgeous. Why I've not this, if I take off the cap, when we see it in the hand, to be honest, it's a bit too short for me. I can post it, and posting, it then feels too long. It's one of those ones where no matter what I try, it just doesn't feel right in the hand, which is a shame because I absolutely love it. I love using it. I love writing with it. Another issue that I've got with it, and I'm being extremely picky here, is this nib. It's only a fine. I'd love to have this in a broad. One of the things I may do at a later stage is try and get a broad number five nib and see if I can swap this nib out. This pen is a cartridge converter. It's currently empty. In one respect, I do like it being a cartridge converter because... I've been able to refill this a couple of times during the month. But I do like the pen. I do enjoy writing with it. It writes really, really nicely. I say it's a bit light in the hand. It's a bit small in the hand. So that's why I've had to ding it. Let's take a look over on the Tomai River paper. So this is a 52 GSM Tomai River paper in a Galen leather notebook. As in here, I've just called out a lot of what I've said. I did get some issues on Rhodia paper. But I find most of my pens, I have issues on Rhodia paper. A little pass with micro mesh, well that fits that. But I do wonder if it's not so much the paper, but the way that I hold the pen. Because I've noticed that I don't hold the pen straight on. I have it so the nib is on a slight angle. And I think that's what's causing the problem. And then when I do the micro mesh, I just smooth the nib down to use that angle better. All in all, it's a really nice pen and it's nice and enjoyable. But I had to rank and it comes in at position number six. So this is the D-like New Moon 2. There we are, one final look at that colouring. At position number five this month, again, it could easily have been position one. What I decided to do is go for the Visconti Breeze. Here we go. There's a Visconti Breeze for you to see. It's another one. It looks really nice. Very different patterning than that D-like. But again, I enjoy the colour. I love the colours of this. It's another one with a small nib, but this time it is a broad. And I really do enjoy broad nibs at the moment. It's another one, cartridge converter. I've got some ink in here still. One of the things I did with this pen is I actually did change the ink out during the month. So I started the month with Diamine Sub-Zero and then... About just over a week ago, I changed it to be Diamine Aqua Lagoon. It was a nice change, very similar in terms of colour. One of the reasons I did this, is let's go and take a look at the Tomai River paper and you can see. So this ink should have a nice blue shimmer to it. One of the things I have noticed is at the start of my writing, so where we've got the VIS in Visconti, it's there. But then as I go on, it loses that shimmer. So the shimmer's not consistent and... To be honest, I'd like to see it occur more through the writing. I like the colour of the ink. <laughs> As I said, it's actually very close to Aqua Lagoon anyway. I do see some shading. Not too much, but there is a bit of shading there. When I'm writing with this pen, it's nice. It's got that hint of feedback, and that's what I like. So it feels like it's slightly dragging on the paper, and I enjoy that because I like the tactile feel of it. Let's take a look back at the pen. Here it is. Again, this is one of my issues. It's a bit too short. It's Better than the D-like, but still feels a bit short when I'm writing. 
It will post, but it feels like it's back heavier than when it's posted. And again, it feels too long. A bit like you've got a magic wand in your hands. That's what the feeling it gives me. I know it's a bit, bit of a weird statement, isn't it? Unposted, yes, it's livable, similar to that D-like. I like the that broad nib. That, to me, is the thing which makes a difference. So this is why, when I was doing my ranking for this, I decided this will come in at position number five. So this is the Visconti Breeze. Just one more quick look at that gorgeous colouring. So position number four. Again, had to think long and hard about this. But what I decided for position number four is the Kaigaloo 316. Again, I'm just going to spin this round because it's another one. I think it looks so nice. Got a little bit of translucency there in the material. Again, it all adds interest to the eye, doesn't it? Let's take the cap off. This one, it's got a number six nib on. And again, it's a cartridge converter. When we look at this pen in my hand, it's about the same length as that Visconti Breeze, but it feels a little bit heavier. I don't know how best to describe it without you feeling it, but this feels as if it's more substantial to me. It will post again. Post right on the end of that top cap. Makes it very long, makes it very unwieldy. I have to use this unposted. Pop that back together and we'll take a look over on the Tomai River paper. So here we go, Kaigaloo 316 with Robert Oster Tranquility. I absolutely love this ink. I l actually like the combination. You can see quite a lot of shading coming through. The writing is smooth. As I said, it fits well in my hand. It's maybe the teeniest bit too short, but that's something that doesn't bother me too much. With this pen, it performs not too bad on most papers, but I did notice some little bits of hard starts and skipping, but I'm I'm putting that down to the weather conditions here because it's fairly hot and I've noticed that in the hot weather a number of my pens struggle so I'm not overly concerned about that and certainly with the previous ink that I've used in this which is Dymine Soft Mint I've never had any major issues with it but for all these reasons again I had to rank this it could have easily been number one there's that nib again this is one of the things I actually do like with this I know I'm, I'm digressing slightly because it's a number six nib I can easily change that if I want to. And I have got a broad nib, which I may put in here. I've also got a Kaigaloo long knife nib, which again I might put in here. I'm not sure. But it gives you that flexibility to change the nib however you want. But I have to mark it on what it was doing this month. And so this month we have position number four. I'm just going to reposition the paper slightly. Then we can get all the unmarked pens in here there we go so this pen it's the Kaigaloo 316 position number three for january well this one goes to the now wall school kill again it's beautiful coloring i mean there's certainly been a bit of a pattern between the ones we've looked at so far they've all got this unusual look to them this one it's got blues it's got greens it's got browns and see bits of silver in there. Really unusual. This pen is a piston filler. One of the things I like about it is it's got an ink window, so you can see your ink level. Now, personally, and this is a very personal thing, I would have liked to have seen that ink window slightly wider because at times I do struggle to actually see what the ink level is, especially now when it's getting quite low. It's another one with a number six nib. There we go. There's that now all nib. These nibs, they're easy to swap out. I do have another school kill and I've actually swapped out the nib that came with it and I've got a broad nib from Goulet Pens. Again, I love it. This pen, it's slightly longer than the other two. So it fits a lot better in the hand. There we go. You can see that there. It's another pen I enjoy writing with. It's nice. There's smoothness to it. But... Again, that little bit of feedback. Let's take a look on the Tomai River paper. So again here, I'm calling out, it's another one I love. I love them all. 
But saying that, I don't think I've got a single pen where I couldn't say how much I enjoy writing with it. The size is just perfect. It fits so nice in my hand. It feels nice. If I had to be very, very, very picky, I'd like it to be a little bit wider because I do feel my fingers are a little bit close together. I see quite a lot of shading when I'm writing. It comes over quite well here on this paper, especially when you see it with your real eyes rather than through a picture. The now one nib, it's smooth. It's consistent. I've had to do a little bit of micromeshing to it, but again, I think that's actually down to the way that I hold the pen rather than the nib itself. I like the color of the ink. It's not that same blue. It's got a little bit of interest to it, so it looks a bit different. And to me, again, it's the character of the writing. It's the character of the ink, which can make a lot of difference to what you see on paper. The medium nib, it's a bit fine for me. That's why I've swapped the nib on the other one for a broad. And that one is really, really nice. I just thought for doing this review, let's stick with the factory default nib that came with it. So this here is a Nowall school kill. And this school kill comes in at position number three. Let's take one final look at this pattern. I think it looks so nice. So we've got two pens left. Which one is going to come in at position number two? Well, for this month, again, it's been a really hard decision. I wanted to put this at number one, but I just had to put it somewhere. And when I get around to the pen that did come in at number one, I think you'll understand. But this goes to position number two, the Diplomat Aero. So this pen, it's not like the others. It's fairly plain to look at. It's this factory color. So it's just really the raw aluminium color. It's a slightly unusual shape, so that does make it different to the other pens. The cap pulls off. This is one, I'd actually like it if the cap screwed off, but, you know, it doesn't really matter because it's nice and solid when it's on there. Another number six size nib, and it's another cartridge converter. In the hand, ever so slightly too small, not enough that would cause me a major problem. You know, again, it's one of those, another maybe half a centimeter and it would be perfect for me. Again, it does post fine. Posted, it's actually not too bad. It does feel slightly back heavy to me, but that's mainly because I usually use this unposted. And unposted, as I said, it's not too bad. Let's take a look over on the Tomai River paper. So we started the month with Waterman Audacious Red. I love the name of the sink. Audacious, it sounds so good. It's really nice though. It's a nice red. It's not a red red, if that makes sense to you. I would say it's got a little bit of orange in there, which again makes it different and it adds character to it. I don't see much in the way of shading when I'm using this, but again, I'm not too bothered because the ink color's enough that that makes up for it. About a week ago, I then also swapped this and I popped in Diamine Marine. Now, I've done this because I'm looking for a future video where I'm going to actually compare Aqua Lagoon and Marine against each other because they're both very, very similar. The Marine, it's got a little bit more green in it than the Aqua Lagoon. And that's why I thought, well, let's get these into pens now so I can spend a few weeks comparing them and trying them out on the different papers and seeing what they look like. And that's a video I'll do, you know, in two or three months time, most probably. This pen writes so nicely. It's a broad nib and it just glides over the paper. There's the teeniest amount of feedback. It's nice. It's pleasant. It's not a horrible feedback feeling, but it's enjoyable and you know you're writing. And I do like that tactile feel. I've got some pens where the nib is like writing on glass and I really don't enjoy that. I like the tactile nature of it and that is given to me by this one. One of the things I'm calling out on here, in previous things, including the Audacious Red, I have had the very occasional skip. By occasional, I mean maybe a couple of times on an A5 page, but I've not noticed that so far with this Diamine Marine. I haven't done a lot of testing. I've only used it for about a week, so I do need to do more work on that. And that's part of what I'll also cover when I compare Aqua Lagoon with Marine. But that means this pen, we've got to give it a mark. So we're going to give this position number two for this month. So this is the Diplomat Aero. So that all means position number one. It's dead easy to work out because it's the only pen left. And that goes to this. This is the Pilot 
Custom 823. This was my wild card entry for this month. All the other pens, they'd won their price points during the course of last year. This one, I only received it at Christmas, and to be honest, I wanted to get in and use it. And you could maybe say it came in at position one because it's still new. So you tend to favour the new things. Or certainly I do. But the only thing I can say about this pen. Wow. I absolutely love it. The pen is so nice. It looks gorgeous. At the moment, there's very little ink in there. There's a little tiny bit. That's because I've been using it so much. It's a vacuum filler. The others have either been the cartridge converter, apart from the school kill, which was a piston. So again, this is a different filling mechanism. One of the things I do have to remind myself is to make sure that I open up this valve. What this valve does, if we look at the bottom of the body, as I twist the, there we go, as that end cap's twisted, you can see this valve moving, and that just shuts off the ink from the rest of the body. In the hand, I've got to be honest, it's about the same length as that school kill. It does feel lighter, but it also feels wider. I like that because I enjoy the, the width, so my fingers aren't squashing against each other. This has got a gold nib. This has got a 14 karat gold nib. Just look at that. It's really nice. It's a broad nib. I enjoy writing with it. It's got a nice, I'm not going to call it a bounce, but there's a softness to it when you're writing. Let's go and take a look over on the Tomai River paper. So on here, you can see it's wow. It's just wow. I love this. As said, the, the way that the nib responds to the paper, it's not gliding over the paper. There's got that tactileness to it, but it just feels as if your hand, the pen and the paper, they're just one thing. It's so nice and easy to use. I love this brandy snap ink in here i'm seeing so much shading coming through it's a nice color it's got personality because of all that shading it just looks so nice when it goes down on the paper one of the things i am going to do when this ink runs out which will be fairly quickly i'm going to try it with robert oster cafe crema because i want to see how that does and that's a similar toned ink so that would be interesting this pen is so comfortable to use. When I've been note-taking, I've found I can use this pen for a couple of hours, not even realise I've been writing because it just gets out of the way. It's comfortable. It's nice and smooth to use. The downside with this pen, it's a lot of money. As we can see back on this optic paper, it was 394 Australian dollars. That's a lot to pay for a pen. It really is. I will be honest, I think it was worth every cent. The amount of pleasure that I've got when I'm writing with it. It's such a glorious and nice combination. So this comes in as the winner of this month at position number one. So this is the Pilot Custom 823. Just going to turn the page. Fetch this back down slightly. There we go. So the other two pens that I've used this month, the first one is the Bauer 79. Here it is. $5. Nice cheap pen. Looks really nice. I know this is a clone of a very expensive pen. Let's take off the cap. The cap screws off. Reveals a fairly small nib. One of the things I like with this, when the cap's posted, it actually screws on. So it's nice and solid. Unposted, the pen feels slightly short. Posted, I enjoy writing with this pen posted. It feels really nice. So it's one of those few pens where I will quite happily use it posted. Let's jump over to the Tomai River paper. So this, as I say, is inspired by the Mont Blanc Skywalker. When I'm writing with it, the nib does feel a bit scratchy. It's a fine nib, so I'm not overly worried about that. The pen itself, when I got it, I was really surprised. Well, yeah, I was surprised that I got it because it was a gift from my wife. But I was also surprised that it writes so nicely for a $5 pen. I love this ink in this pen. Diamine Woodland Green. It's a really nice green colour. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know green. It's my favourite colour. So anything with green in it looks really nice to me anyway. I've called it out here again, unposted. The pen feels a bit short. But once I've screwed that cap on, it feels really nice. So again, this is a nice pen. The Bauer 79. Final pen we're going to take a look at today is the Jinhao 100. Let me fetch this in. This is another gorgeous looking pen. I know it's blue, it's not green. 
I actually don't have this in green. Maybe I need to invest in one of those. It's a dual fold style pen. Very similar to that Tiger Lou. I'm just going to very quickly fetch the Tiger Lou in. You know, there's very similar in terms of size and looks between the two of them. Take the cap off. Again, it's got that number six size nib. This is in a medium. This writes really well. I do have another Jinhao 100 in Meteorite. And that one, I don't know what it is, but the nib just is not right for me. What I'm planning on doing is using that other Jinhao 100 as an experiment. And I'm actually going to try and grind the nib down myself to make it into more of a, an architect style nib. That's going to be a big experiment. And hopefully if it goes well, I've got another couple of pens that I can do that with. And I'll try and make a video once I've got the process down and working for me. Let's take a look over on the Tomoe River paper. So I'm calling here the, the nib it was a bit stiff, but again, like everything else, teeniest bit of micro mesh, and it's really nice to use. As I've said previously, I think that's down to the position that I hold the pen in rather than the actual nib itself. It's a nice fit in the hand, again, ever so slightly small. The bottom of the section's got a lip on it, and that does slightly dig into my finger. Again, not enough that it would cause me a major problem. I love this ink color. It's got that hint of purple to it. And again, that means it's adding some character to the writing because it's not just a standard flat blue color. But for the limited amount of time I've used this pen this month, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure to use. So this is the Jin Hao 100 Centennial. I'm now going to get rid of this paper and I'll fetch the pens back for one final look. So here we have the pens that are used during January of 2022. Position six, the D-like New Moon 2. Number five, Visconti Breeze. Number four, Kaigaloo 316. Number three, the Narwhal Schoolkill. Number two, the Diplomat Aero. Position number one, the Pilot Custom 823. And then my other pens, the Bower 79, and the Jin Hao 100. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. How would you rank these pens? What changes would you make to my scoring? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.